Hey, greetings and welcome back, relationship schoolers. Jason Gaddis here with another episode of this podcast. I'm your host. And happy holidays, happy new year, um, happy solstice. Yeah, wow. Going into um, a really beautiful time of year here. I hope it is for you wherever you are on the earth, moving through space like this. It's a while, right? I want to thank uh, this therapist who says, left us a review. I'm a therapist living abroad who started listening to podcasts as an alternative to in-person treatment. This is one of my favorite podcasts. They have a great passion for the subject matter and have very helpful information here. I recommend it to everyone. Hey, thank you, therapist, whoever you are, wherever you are. Yeah, I think a lot of therapists listen to this, um, a lot of practitioners, coaches, et cetera, and I'm happy to try to help here. Okay, and this episode actually in particular is going to be helpful for you helpers, which could be a therapist, a coach, um, acupuncturist, a doctor, um, someone is in the healing arts, all right? Uh, this is for you, okay? As you know, this podcast is about relationships and all things relational. We specifically focus on long-term relationships a lot because that's the hardest one. Certainly, we deal with friendships, work relationships, family relationships, which I'm going to mention on this podcast today. Um, but you know, our belief here is that if we can help people have better relationships and work out their differences with other people, that the planet will be better off. All right. That's one of our assertions here. Okay. And you are part of that. So thank you for being the kind of person who is willing to work on their inner life and the life between us so that maybe we can have an even more rich tapestry called life out there in the world because there's a lot of difficult people out there and you're one of them if we marry you by the way um, we're all kind of difficult sometimes uh, but the world is challenged you know there's a lot of intense challenges going on and um, man if we can respect each other and work through conflict respectfully I, I think we're going to be better off as a species all right yeah so thanks for coming back thanks for joining us if you're new Man, holidays. Okay. Um, this episode really is about helping people. Like, how do you help someone who doesn't heed your advice? Let's say you're caught in a dynamic with someone. Uh, you care a lot, right? And you care about their well-being. But you keep seeing them drink, or you keep seeing them not get a job, or you keep seeing them be depressed, or whatever that thing is that they're struggling with. You keep seeing them in that place. And as a person who cares, it's hard for you to see them. Um, not change, right? Be stuck, not get empowered. Um, blame other people, stay stuck in their victim seat, whatever it is. You're just like, oh, and this is very apparent around the holidays because most of us have a family member like this. Maybe it's us, but often it's not us because you're listening to this because you're open and you want to learn. Um, they tend to not want to learn and they tend to hurt themselves or hurt other people. Uh, or, you know, just, they're just kind of struggling and it's hard for you. Right. And so often that can be a family member, an in-law, a sibling, a parent, a child, um, you know, someone in our sphere, in our inner circle. And if you're, um, it could be a partner, I don't know, but stay with me here. So you're struggling with someone. Okay. And this episode is all about how do you help someone who kind of doesn't want your help, all right? Now, the simplistic answer I, I tell people a lot is you don't because it's not your job to help them. It's their job to help them. I appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate your care, but it's not your job, okay? So that's the very first step here is to remember if they want help truly, if they truly want to get better, get well, improve their life, they will take responsibility and do something about that. Because they don't or won't, it often means they are unconsciously, subconsciously, semi-consciously invested in staying right where they are. They're just kind of stuck. And man, as it, when I was a therapist and these people would come into my office, after a few sessions, I'd get hip to this and be like, oh, you don't well, really want to change. No, no, I do, they'd say. But they wouldn't do anything different. And their story would be one of blame, blaming themselves or blaming everyone else. And uh, this person 
is very hard to help. They're very challenging to help. Sometimes it's like they need a swift kick to the nuts or the head or the heart or whatever, but you know, uh, maybe usually people change if you've noticed and you change when there's enough pain or longing. Those are kind of the two variables for change, pain and longing. And so if they're not in enough pain and they would argue they are, oh uh, yeah, and they, they want to come talk to you and you listen, but then they don't do anything different. And then they, you kind of are hooked into this dynamic where you're helping them sort of, you're listening, you're being nice to them, you're trying to offer them subtle suggestions or maybe not so subtle suggestions about a book to read or a podcast to listen to or a show to watch um, or a person to see, but they don't take action, right? They just won't do it. So this particular person is very challenging to work with. So in at the relationship school, we teach our coaches how to deal with this through two techniques. One is called, it's a old counseling technique called motivational interviewing. So Google that if you want to. And another one is just getting, helping a person get clear on what their values are, because we won't change parts of our lives that we don't value and that we don't put an emphasis on. So for example, if I'm out of shape and I'm really uh, not healthy and my body's, it's taking a toll and I'm really struggling in life around my health, but the claim is I want to quote, get healthier, get better. If I don't actually put things in place to, to change myself, I'm not getting healthier. Therefore, I'm invested in staying stuck where I am. All right? So we have to look at a person's values also, what they care about. And um, I call this a person's values, their compass, like the, the guiding light of their life. Where's their North Star pointed? And for some people, it's pointed at suffering and checking out and distraction and watching Netflix all day and being on Facebook and doing nothing. That's what they value. Because we, we look at a person's values by how they live their life, not what they say, all right? My mentor, John, taught me this. So if you're with, in a dynamic, with a person in your family or in your circle, or somewhere in your sphere that won't change because, for whatever reason, right? I'm saying it's because they don't want it. They will claim they do, but then all we have to do is look at their actions. That's it. Okay, so that's like the major hack is just look at their actions. Now, if you really want to take this to the next step, um, I'm, I've got two recommendations. One is to back off and one is to challenge them. Okay, let's unpack these one at a time. Backing off looks like you, you're hooked, okay? You are hooked in a dynamic with this person and I'm going to ask you to get unhooked. Uh, because this person clearly doesn't want your help. They're not heeding your advice. They're not taking action. So stop your aggressive attempts at trying to help them. It's not, it's not what they want or need right now. Okay. They're not, they're too scared. They're too um, shut down. They're too unwilling or unready. It's, it's okay. Can you honor them where they're at by stepping back and loving them from afar and saying, you know what, friend, sibling, parent, whoever, I love you. And I'm going to just take a little step back because I noticed I, I got enrolled in this dynamic with you where I'm trying to help you. And, and I, it's not, it's starting to not feel very good to me. I ultimately want you to help yourself. I don't really know how to help you and I wish you well. And, you know, let me know if you need something. I'm here because I'm your friend. Uh, that's okay. Like that, I recommend that type of backing off process. All right. Now let's look at their values. Um, Remember, it's, it's not important enough to them yet. So if you, this will help you back off, by the way, if you can just see that they're not ready. When someone says, I want to run a marathon, and then they don't do any training, it tells you that they don't want to run a marathon. If someone says, I, win, well, I want to get a job, but they're looking for some magical download from the universe uh, without doing anything and without looking and without actually applying themselves and without putting themselves out there and getting their resume together and posting it to like 25 different job sites over and over and over and being relentless about it and doing, you know, telling their whole network, look, I'm looking for work and here's my skill set. I want this. That person wants a job and will get a job. The person that says, yeah, I, I want to work, but man, it's been really hard. Uh, there's no really good jobs out there. Um, yeah. 
they're just making excuses because they're scared and they don't, they're immobilized. They don't know what to do. Um, and you probably are hooked thinking you can help them. But I, if guys, if it hasn't changed with them, I would just submit here that you can't help them. You're ineffective. All right. So let's just admit that and stop asserting that you know how to help them and just admit like, actually, I don't, I don't know what to do here. All right. I think it's going to go better for both of you. I've seen this go down, by the way, when people back off, that the other person finally feels less judged and like free. And then what's cool is I've seen some of those people who are more in the struggling seat uh, mobilize because they don't have the person constantly holding up their leg or kind of picking them up off the ground. They have to pick themselves up. And when they pick themselves up off the ground, look out. And now that person is on their on the move and they're ready for transformation. Okay. So um, I know it's hard to watch a person in your life when they're in pain and when they're struggling. And I want to help you learn how to do this whole thing differently. Um, Cause I'm arguing here that that's not helping. You're not actually helping them. Okay. You might even be enabling or hurting their journey. So consider that. Okay. All right. Uh, action step today. Um, if you want more, if you're like, okay, this guy's making sense here. Yeah, I am stuck in this dynamic. A um, couple action steps. One is go back and listen to our holiday podcast episodes. Okay. There's been about three or four I've done if you're still wrestling with the holidays. Okay. Because um, for a lot of us, the holidays are, are challenging. For others, if you have a great family uh, or you're single and have a great community or your partner didn't have a great community, awesome. Celebrate celebrate it, um, and enjoy it and, uh, really be grateful if you can for, for what you have and what's going on. If you're struggling, those episodes I think will help because, uh, I unpack and frame kind of what, what are some tips to deal with during the holidays. And now that we're at the tail end of the holidays, you can be kind of reflecting back and being like, okay, next year I'm going to do it differently, All right? If you don't like how you played it this year, then make a commitment now to play it differently next year. And if you're in the helping conversation like we are today and you want a next step, then I'm doing a free web class on this whole thing, okay? In early January, and it's called relationshipschool.com forward slash your future, okay? Because I'm going to unpack um, how to help friends and then how to help people as a profession if you want. If you want to, say, become a coach someday, um, I'm going to lay out the path for you. But I'm also going to give you some tips on how to help others, all right, that are going to be more effective than probably what you're doing. Okay. So relationshipschool.com forward slash your future. And, um, again, I want to thank everybody for leaving some five-star reviews. We are over 500 on the iTunes. It's now not iTunes anymore, guys. If you're an Apple user, it's Apple podcasts, um, over 500 reviews there. And then on Spotify, uh, please leave us a review there. That'd be amazing. Cause it's, you know, not, we don't have a big following there. Um, and Google play, uh, YouTube. Remember if you're a YouTube person, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm putting out more and more videos right now. Uh, subscribe, share them with a friend. And also all the podcasts are also on YouTube. Okay. And if I interview someone, you can actually see us talking sometimes in person, sometimes just on a zoom, uh, split screen call. Sometimes my wife and I sitting next to each other. Uh, so follow us on YouTube, okay? It's Jason Gaddis on YouTube. All right. And then finally, uh, one little plug here for our coaching program. So stay tuned for that. And all the best to you. Happy New Year. Let's rock it out. Let's make 2020 um, amazing. As a friend of mine, Dagny, just told me today, like, let's look at 2020, like, vision. Think of 2020 vision, uh, that we're going to, like, have a really clear vision in 2020 for ourselves. Okay, so that's my wish for you. More soon. I'm finishing up the RC1 program. And before, with Deeper, I had learned so much. I dove into the water, if you will, and came out just immersed in really knowing more about myself and feeling even more support in this community and knowing so much more about relationships. And now also going through the RC1 program, I feel clarity and the ability to articulate what's true for me and to really stand in my truth, which has been a huge part of challenges in my journey. 
And a beautiful part of that is feeling surrounded by a community that holds true to staying in your integrity and supporting and challenging each other, which is super fantastic. And tools to help me learn about myself, like if I get triggered, I have specific tools to navigate my triggers, if you will. And that for me is a huge piece. So rather than going around and, for example, blaming others, I know that I can look at myself and be an author of my life rather than a victim. And being able to set boundaries is also a huge part of that. And even before the boundaries part, through the relationship school, I've been able to get clear on what's even important to me and what kind of boundaries do I want to set and then how do I even do that. I would absolutely recommend this program because I've experienced more confidence in myself. I've experienced clarity in myself and in relating with others. Yeah, boom. Karina. Thank you, Karina. Hardworking Karina is in level two, learning how to work with couples now. So if you want to find out about our coaching program, relationshipschool.com forward slash your future, and I'll talk live to you about the whole thing and how to help people. Okay. All right. Talk soon, folks. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Relationship School fans and smart couple listeners, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. All right. Do us a favor. Subscribe. Share one of these videos with a friend. All right. We want to help the planet get their act together around relationships. And you are one of them. So thank you.